Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us for today's 10,000 Coffees Office Hour session on Business Career Conversations with J.D. Irving Limited. We are so happy for you joining us here today. So thank you for taking some time out of your morning or your afternoon, wherever you're joining us from. Uh, today's session is actually our third Office Hour event with 10,000 Coffees, and we are very grateful for the support of JDI in hosting this particular session. So UNB and JDI actually share a strategic partnership which means that we work together on a number of different initiatives from research to recruitment, um, education enrichment, and so on. So we're very happy for their support to put on this session as well to really share some information with all of you about various business career conversations. So thank you to JDI, of course, and to our panelist, Eric Burley, for helping put on this session today. So most of you joining us today are members of our 10,000 Coffees platform. Um, so whether you're students who are seeking mentorship or your alumni who volunteer to give back your time, a huge thank you to all of you. And we really hope that this experience has been valuable on the 10,000 Coffees platform. We do host these office hour events for you um, to give you some support and some advice about various different careers. So if you have any ideas or suggestions for other topics that you'd like us to explore or perhaps different workshops, please feel free to let us know and we're happy to look at some different ideas for our next semester. So there are just a few housekeeping items today before we get started. Um, we do have about an hour for today's session and we will begin with a presentation from our speaker, Eric Burley, followed by a Q&A period for the last about half an hour of the event. So many of you pre-submitted questions in advance, which is wonderful. Thank you so much for sending in some great questions. Um, but at any point throughout the session, please feel free to tell us any questions you might have um, through the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. So if anything comes up during Eric's presentation or if he sparks different ideas during the Q&A period, please feel free to send your questions in through that box and we'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, so with all that being said, it is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Eric Burley. Eric graduated from UMB St. John's Faculty of Business in 2000, and he is now working as the Director of Supply Chain for JDI. So Eric actually went to work for JDI just after his education with UMB St. John, and he has since held many different roles in operations and transportation, trucking, career, and marine, which of course I'll leave uh, Eric to chat with you guys about today. So thank you so much, Eric, for being here with us. We really, really appreciate your support with this session. And with that being said, I'll hand the floor over to you. Great. Thanks, Tasha, for the intro. Looks like I was muted. I apologize. So thank you, Tasha, for the introduction, and thank you, UMB, for the opportunity. Uh, really appreciate it. Today, I'm going to start off. I'll tell you a bit about my, my career progression. I'm going to a brief slideshow just to talk a bit about transportation logistics here at J.D. Irving and some opportunities that we have coming up in the future in terms of employment, whether it be for a student or folks already out there in, uh, in the pipeline. Um, after that, again, uh, I'll talk about a few of the things that I see as keys to success in this industry, and then we'll jump into, uh, into the Q&A. Uh, thanks for the pre-submitted questions. That was great. And uh, please do uh, take the opportunity to submit some questions as uh, Tasha suggested. So. Um, with that, a bit about my career. So I graduated from UNB back in uh, 2000 with a, with a business degree. Um, from there, really moved into uh, a role with J.D. Irving. And uh, this first role with J.D. Irving was in transportation. And I worked for a company called RST Industries. And what I did there initially is I moved into a very much entry-level role working in, uh, in pricing. So I would have priced up contracts and work that uh, RST, which is a trucking company, was gonna be doing for customers. So we're very closely with our, with our commercial folks, had a lot of exposure on the customer side, worked, uh, worked a lot with folks uh, right in the business and operations and, uh, and really get to know um, drivers and uh, in the industry quite well in that, uh, in that first role. Great spot really to start. Um, from there, I moved into a role as a pricing manager for Sunbury in uh, Fredericton. So a few years after starting with JDI, I made a move, went up to Fredericton and uh, took on that role, had a small team and very, very much similar in terms of roles and responsibilities. But uh, again, get to know a bit of a different side of the trucking business. And I'll go into more details of that here as we, as we go along. Um, 
shortly after that, I moved into operations at Sunbury. I had, had a great opportunity to uh, take on an operations role and absolutely wonderful. And, and I'd say once I get into operations, really never look back. Um, just very, very engaging work, um, very much customer focused, very much really working very closely with drivers and those frontline folks and um, really digging in day to day to make things better and uh, really to get things done and make things happen. Um, after, after my time really starting off in operations at Sunbury, I moved into a role with Midland and I took on uh, responsibility for managing a terminal for transportation logistics right here in St. John, New Brunswick, which is where I'm, where I'm based out of today. Um, managed that terminal in St. John for five years, really got to know that that side of trucking as well, which is that LTL, which is less than truckload. I'll talk a bit about that here as we go along. And uh, in the courier business. So you think about FedEx, UPS, those competitors out there and partners in some cases that, uh, that we would deal with and uh, really got a good understanding of that piece of the business. And, you know, again, responsible for all aspects of the terminal from the financial side, uh, some responsibility around uh, sales and marketing there as well. Um, after Midland, I, I actually made the decision to leave JDI for a period of time and I went over to Irving Oil. At Irving Oil, had the opportunity to move in a senior manager role responsible for rail logistics and operations. Um, really got to work very closely with uh, New Brunswick Southern Railway, which is a JDI company, and got to know a lot of the folks there very, very well. And, um, you know, very, very interesting role, um, especially at the time, uh, just with uh, things that were happening out there in the marketplace. So I had a responsibility for all those inbound feedstocks coming in and uh, all those outbound finished goods and recycled material um, leaving uh, the facility here in, in St. John, ultimately urban oil refinery. Um, after a couple of years in that role, I moved into another role at Irving Oil, which was responsibility for their marine operations and, and logistics. So similar in terms of uh, responsibility around the movement of uh, feedstocks coming into the refinery here in, uh, in St. John, some responsibility on, uh, on the other side of the pond for their Whitegate refinery, and uh, also responsibility for, for finished goods that were leaving, uh, leaving this area. So we'll talk a bit more about that here as we, as we go along as well. And, <clears throat> excuse me, most recently moved into a supply chain role at, uh, at J.D. Irving. Um, timing was great, great opportunity, and uh, when it came back to JDI last fall. And um, in this role, I'm responsible for supply chain for our transportation companies. <clears throat> a big part of that is uh, procurement and buying. And really, I'd have a, have a team of folks behind me that are doing that work day to day. And uh, I'd spend a lot of time focusing on strategy and, and planning from a, from a procurement and supply chain perspective. So with that, we'll uh, move right into the slide deck. So really just on this first slide, I think everyone can see, these would be uh, some of the J.D. Irving companies that uh, we would have on the transportation side. So from a marine perspective at, uh, at J.D.I., we have Atlantic Towing, Kent Line, Harbor Development, We'll talk a bit more about those individually here as we go along. On the rail side, we have the Brunswick Southern Rail, we have the Eastern Main Railway, as well as the Main Northern. On the trucking side at JDI, we have RST, we have uh, Sunbury, and we have Midland. And then we have JDI Logistics, and um, talk a bit more detail on, about that. And we have Universal uh, Truck and Trailer as well. So I'll move on here next, and we'll talk a bit more in detail about, uh, about Marine. So very, very interesting uh, piece of the transportation supply chain, Marine. Um, really within J.D. Irving, we have Atlantic Towing. Atlantic Towing operates a very large fleet of offshore supply vessels, platform supply vessels, as well as uh, coastal tugs. Um, they offer port services and they have some barging operations as well. Uh, Atlantic Towing, ultimately, when you think about St. John as a port, uh, Atlantic Towing would be responsible for moving the vessel traffic safely in and out of um, the docks, the berths, the, the wharfage and jetties here in this port. 
Uh, they do provide similar services in, in Halifax, as an example as well. Um, they would they would do work also in, uh, in BC, out on the West Coast, and uh, also have operations in uh, Trinidad and Tobago on the, uh, on the Tug side. So very, very interesting piece of the business. And uh, I would have worked closely with folks at Atlantic Towing when, uh, when I was supporting uh, Irving Oil Marine Operations. Uh, Kent Line would offer uh, port agency services, uh, husbandry services. Uh, Kent Line is, is ultimately an agent. And what that means is uh, they would act on behalf of a vessel charter or a vessel owner in, uh, in ports of call. Uh, would have uh, a big presence here in Atlanta, Canada, and, and other areas as well. Um, very important uh, piece of the business and uh, critical to that day-to-day -day supply chain. Um, the next business here within, within JDI on the Marine side uh, is Harbor Development. So Harbor Development primarily would uh, provide dredging and marine construction services to, uh, to the marine industry, um, operate here in Atlanta, Canada, do a lot of dredging work here in uh, the St. John Harbor, uh, working closely with the Port of St. John and their technical experts. Um, what dredging is ultimately is really making sure that uh, vessel channels, um, berthage areas are, are safe for, uh, for docking and uh, safe for transit. So a very interesting uh, port here in St. John with uh, the St. John River and uh, certainly ensuring that uh, things are properly dredged is absolutely critical. So again, Herbert Development worked very, very closely with, uh, with the various port agencies and others, other third parties out there to make, uh, make sure um, vessel lanes are, are properly dredged. So ultimately they remove material and um, safely move that to uh, an approved location and uh, helps to keep channel depths at the, at the right spot, which is great. And next we'll, we'll go into uh, the rail services, or sorry, the services side. So <clears throat> at JDI, we have, a, we have a company that's called JDI Logistics, um, non-asset based. So they, there's, there's no trucks, there's no trailers, there's no drivers, there's no, no rail services, so to speak, or, or rail assets, and not on the marine side or on the air side. But uh, JDI Logistics would, uh, would really act as a representative of uh, their customers in terms of uh, looking after all their logistics needs. So it could be as simple as uh, going out and contracting with a, a trucking company to cover a specific load. Uh, it could be more in depth where you're taking on an entire scope of work for a customer um, and, uh, and also contract logistics. And this really covers off the, the, full, the full spectrum. So it's truck, it's rail, it's marine and it's air services. So folks in, uh, in JDI would, uh, we work, actually work very closely with JDI Logistics to manage many, many aspects of our uh, logistics and our supply chain. Um, the next piece on the services side is uh, Universal Truck and Trailer, largest freight line dealer in, uh, in Atlanta, Canada. Um, they would have <clears throat> operations in uh, today in St. John, as well as in, uh, in the Moncton Dieppe area. Uh, they provide uh, mechanic shop services. Uh, I want to say they have 34 active bays today and um, also tractor sales as, as well. So a very successful business and a uh, very interesting uh, piece of business as well. And um, moving on to the next, the next sector, which is on the rail side. Um, very interesting piece of the supply chain rail, I would say you know, probably still one of the biggest opportunities for growth and uh, one of the biggest opportunities really for helping to improve, I'll say, our net impact on, uh, on emissions. Um, again, rail is very, very efficient in many, many aspects and um, really would, uh, would be a good way to, and is a good way to move goods um, in, uh, in North America. Obviously, there's, uh, there's some constraints depending on uh, supply chain and how your supply chain's structured and inventory requirements and things like that. But uh, rail is a very, very interesting uh, piece of the business. So one that folks should certainly consider. Uh, lots of opportunity here as well. Um, NBM Railways, this is ultimately the parent company of, uh, of those three, three railway companies that uh, fall under J.D. Irving. 
Um, they would provide rail freight distribution. Um, they'd have distribution services right here in St. John. If you've seen the recent announcement around the, uh, the JDI Logistics Park in St. John, this, this facility would be very much involved. Um, they also provide rail maintenance services. So this is where the railway and NBM railways, Eastern Maine, Brunswick Southern, Maine Northern, they would actually go out and do work on, uh, on infrastructure that others would own. And, uh, and those groups also do work uh, on JDI's own infrastructure. So very interesting uh, piece of business, Lot, lots of opportunity there. All right, move into uh, the trucking side. So this is a very busy, high transaction piece of, uh, piece of the supply chain as, as folks can well imagine. Um, again, lots of assets would be typically tied to this industry. Um, JD Irving operates fifth, fifth largest trucking uh, fleet trucking operation in uh, in Canada. Um, they would we would own RST Industries. This is primarily a liquid bulk petroleum chemical dry bulk carrier. Uh, provide great service. They also offer emergency response services in uh, many many areas. Uh, very, very good reputation out there in industry and uh, very well known here in Atlanta, Canada. Um, Sunbury, Sunbury would, uh, would be a, a bulk carrier and they would offer full truckload primarily on the dry van and, uh, and the flatbed side. So again, uh, you'd see Sunbury out there day to day rolling up and down the road. Um, again, flatbed, just so folks are aware, again, just a trailer with a deck and uh, you may see these rolling up and down the road with lumber on them or a piece of equipment and then on the dry van side these would typically be those cube type trailers that you would see and um, the next piece would be on midland so midland would primarily be an ltl less than truckload so again sunbury full truckload midland ltl less truckload and refrigerated also known as a reefer service um, they would also provide uh, courier services those smaller trucks and uh, do a great job there as well. Um, a lot of uh, business to business in terms of that, uh, that piece. All right, we can uh, move into the next section. So just to talk a little bit more high level about JD Irving. So again, we've been in business since uh, 1882, um, involved in a number, a number of industries from construction equipment, consumer goods, consumer products, tissue, diapers. Um, obviously our corporate office here in, uh, in St. John, Brunswick, 300 Union Street. Um, you think about Cavendish um, and other entities like that. Uh, we have so food, agriculture, um, JD Irving, uh, Woodlands, and Sawmills, um, very much operating here in, uh, in Atlanta, Canada and in, and in Maine. Um, we have a retail arm as well. You think about Kent Building Supplies, Chandler Sales, um, naval architecture, uh, shipbuilding, Halifax Shipyard, uh, Shelver and Ship Repair, um, Irving Shipbuilding Incorporated. Um, we also have our pulp and paper arm, so Irving Paper, just off of Bayside Drive here in St. John, and we also have our pulp mill on, uh, on the west side. Um, if, again, you may be aware, going through uh, and have gone through uh, some upgrades over there in uh, recent history and uh, still, still going on right now mentioned shipbuilding and obviously I've already touched on the transportation logistics side. So really thinking about uh, thinking about students and thinking about others out there that are already already actively working through their career um, in terms of what are the opportunities here at JDI. So again this slide speaks to it very very well. Again we are looking for the next generation leaders, folks with a lot of energy, People that are out there taking the initiative, coming coming forward with great ideas, uh, have the ability to lead, execute, get those great outcomes for the organization, focus on the details, and uh, and really be be fast and flexible. Especially in this industry, it's again it's twenty four seven. Um, there's not a day where it shuts down, and uh, you know there's not a weekend where where things stop moving. So it it truly is twenty four seven and uh, three hundred and sixty five days of the year. Um, moving on, I'll talk a little bit about our, our different job families. I know in the, uh, the pre-questions, so some folks are really curious about what are, what are some of those areas in, in terms of, uh, you know, 
whether it's engineering or business administration, what are some areas where there might be opportunities? Well, J.D. Irving overall, certainly, if generally, in, in terms of a field of study, we have opportunities. It could be in the healthcare side. It could be on the engineering side. It could be on the marketing side, supply chain, logistics, business, um, operations, analytics, information technology, so the computer sciences, um, IT, and, uh, and the forestry side. So lots of great programs at, uh, at UMB as well that, uh, that would really be focused on all of these areas. So, and I, I would say that that is not, not by chance. These are, these are areas that are pretty consistent across many, many industries that operate here in, uh, in Atlanta, Canada. Um, give you a bit of a sense, uh, today at JDI, we have uh, over 750 active postings um, when I checked here on, uh, on Friday. And, you know, just about half of those are fairly recent as well. So lots of opportunities out there for folks that are, that are looking today. You know, have a look, find the right area that you think is the right fit for you and, uh, and apply. Um, you know, how are things looking in the future? Really looking at uh, the next two years, really going out to 2023. We've got another seven, 740, 739 um, full-time positions that we're going to be looking to fill uh, right across transportation and logistics alone. So just, just a huge number just on the transportation logistics side. Um, from a student perspective, so this would be in addition to those full-time, we'll be looking for 136 students over that same two years. So lots of, uh, lots of opportunity out there for folks really. All right, so I think, uh, I think what I'll do now, I'll just talk briefly about, uh, about what I would see as some keys to success in this industry. I think this will probably answer a few of the pre-questions that I saw come in. Um, you know what? Pretty straightforward. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it relatively brief. But you know, number one is is you got to have a plan. Um, it doesn't matter if you're going out looking for a role or if you're in a role today, and um, you know, working towards you know that next opportunity or just trying to get things done day to day. Have a plan. Execute on the plan and make sure you have options. So, plan B, plan C, and so on. Um, the next thing I would say is very important to learn quickly. And uh, where, where you have the opportunity, become an expert and uh, have a bit of a specialty uh, certainly helps. It doesn't mean you stick with it and that's the one thing that you do, but uh, certainly can, uh, can help you along, especially in the early stages. But like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't go away. There's a need for that. But learn quickly would be really that second key. Um, the third piece uh, for me would be critical that folks operate with integrity. So just doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Um, goes without saying, or at least it should. Um, fourth thing, thinking about career, take responsibility for your career. Um, you know, in most cases, uh, opportunities are gonna come along when uh, really after you've had an opportunity to demonstrate performance and, uh, and really show what you can do and, and how you can get those great outcomes. And the last thing I would say is, uh, is, is really about you know, focus. And I would say, focus on those things that you can control. And for those things that you don't control, um, be aware of them. It doesn't mean you ignore them, but be aware of them. But there's not a lot of value and spending much time worrying about them because there's not much you can do about it. What would be an example of that? Price of oil, uh, currency exchange rates, um, price of fuel at the pumps, things like that. Um, you know, this, this pandemic that we're in. Uh, as an example, or what we may see coming at us here in, uh, in the future and other areas. So again, focus on those things you can control. And that's it for my formal presentation. And with that, we can move into questions. Thanks. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for that, Eric. That was uh, such a good overview of all the different career opportunities within JDI. Um, and some of the different roles that you've played in your career. So really appreciate you taking the time to share that. And it's also so exciting. I know we have a ton of students on this webinar today, but also some young alumni, some mid-career alumni. Um, and you talked a lot about the various career opportunities that are coming up in the next two years. So that's really exciting. Um, for those of you who, who are looking for a new job opportunity or maybe a change in your career, um, it's really exciting. I think you said 130 student jobs and 700 over 700 for alumni so yeah really fantastic thank you for big, sharing that. big big numbers right 
So. Big numbers. Yeah. That's awesome. And so many different, so many different roles, like you said, from engineering to operations, logistics, and so on. So I hope that those of you here today kind of see where you might fit into uh, roles within JDI or just within those various career fields. So that's fantastic. Um, we will jump into the Q&A and I would like to start with some of our pre-submitted questions. And I actually see that one of the questions that was pre-submitted, I think the same person asked the question live as well, which is, which is awesome. Thank you for doing that. So this person um, is studying logistics and finance at UMB Fredericton. And there's about four courses that they need to take in order to get a concentration in logistics. And what they're concerned about is whether that will give them enough knowledge to enter the field, um, in your opinion, and whether there's maybe some other opportunities that they should be looking at in order to help help them enter that career field. Yeah, that's great. I, I would say, you know what, it's, it's not going to hurt. I would say, you know, having the concentration is certainly going to be a help. I would also say that you'll learn more on the job than what you're going to pick up uh, in your time in, uh, in many aspects of, uh, you know, of your studies at UMB. It, it, again, it's just, it's just the industry. It's so fast paced. There's, you know, in, in each of these different uh, modes of transport, you know, the other one being, I'll say pipeline, you know, they, they would each have their own lingo. So, you know, if whatever you can get out of the offerings at UMB from a logistics, transportation, supply chain perspective is gonna help and uh, would certainly help uh, in terms of, you know, really getting an edge in, in some areas, but you know what, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting field and uh, I would really encourage everyone to consider it, uh, regardless of whether you focused on, uh, on logistics as a, as a part of your curriculum at UMB. That's great, thank you. Um, I think that's really important to note that your education, of course, is going to set you up with the knowledge you need to, to enter the field. But again, once you start, start in your job or in different roles, it's really where you learn some of those key skills and you know, can expand from there. So thank you for that, Eric. Um, just on the same note, we had someone else who, who was wondering about logistics. Um, and so they just completed their third year and they're looking to possibly do a co-op position in logistics next year. So they're really on the same sort of note, they're wondering, um, having only taken one course in logistics, if you think that they'd be able to enter a co-op and feel comfortable in that role yeah, in that definitely, field. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, you know, please do apply. It, it's, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> the important piece in, in all of this is to recognize that uh, from a student co-op work term perspective, the expectation would not be that uh, you'd have a, a base knowledge in, uh, in that field necessarily, other than what you've done in school up to this point. So, you know, whether or not you've uh, had time to concentrate and, you know, I'll say on the logistics side through your curriculum, I, I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't let that give me a second thought. I'd, uh, I'd put my name in the hat. Um, for me, it's, you know, when I look at, uh, at a student for any role that I've looked at in the past, it's uh, very much interested in, uh, in marks and not necessarily um, how they were the entire way along, but really how did it, how did it most recently end? And, uh, you know, if there was a change, what did you change? What'd you learn? Um, you know, is there a history of, uh, of dropping classes and, uh, and things like that? And, and listen, if that has been the case, I would say that it's okay, right? It's, it's really about what's your plan going forward and, um, you know, what have you learned? Things happen. So don't let that uh, impact what, uh, what you'll want to do. So we all have things that pop up in life, whether you're in uh, university studying and, and folks will understand that. So really focus on uh, just doing a bit better as you go along. Perfect. Yeah, I think co-op is such a great opportunity, like just going back to those two questions, co-op is such a great opportunity to get your foot in the door while you're still doing your studies and to really learn from the experience. So definitely talk to, to the co-op office at UNB and see what opportunities might be available. I know that JDI does have a lot of co-op opportunities um, for students at UNB and so many alumni currently working working for JDI. So um, yeah, definitely a, re a really great opportunity for you. So one of the other pre-submitted questions that we had, Eric, was about skills and certificates that are needed for the private sector. 
Um, and I know a couple of the students or an alumni who submitted these questions are also international. So just wondering if you might have any insight into the skills and certificates. Certainly. Um, you know, great, great question. I would say from a skills perspective, very much the, the soft skills. Um, again, absolutely critical. You need to have a good approach with people, especially if you want to be in a leadership role and, uh, and leading others and, you know, be out there as a front facing, um, in a front facing role, facing customers um, or, you know, working with, uh, with drivers or other folks. Um, you know, I would also say that uh, the analytics skills would, uh, would also be very, very critical, especially early on in, uh, in one's career. And, you know, the, the ability to, I'll say, do the analytics may change as you progress in your career, but uh, you, you still need to be able to vet whether or not uh, the story that's being told uh, makes sense. So being able to uh, move away from, you know, drilling into the data is, uh, is also important in that uh, you need to be able to take a bit of a step back and make a, make a quick decision. More specifically around certificates or certifications, there's a few out there specific to logistics and supply chain. Um, there is supply chain management certification, uh, SCMP, I believe. And, you know, that's certain, certainly something that uh, one could look at uh, it takes a bit of time. There's certainly a cost, and uh, many employers like JDI would uh, would generally uh, support folks, uh, you know, moving into that and covering the cost in many areas. Um, a couple other good ones would be just thinking about logistics. Um, you know, really logistics certification. So there's one called CITT. Um, that's a good one for for somebody to have a look at, and uh, another one through the Canadian International Freight Forwarders Association. So it's C-I-F-F-A, I believe. But again, it really depends on the area that you're interested in um, and that sector or that role where, uh, where you're going to be the right fit. So um, have, a, have a look and, uh, and give it some thought. You know, and the, the other thing I would say is if you get an opportunity, there's, I, I think there's a ton of opportunity for folks out there that uh, have a good, solid base understanding and, and really for those that specialize, thinking about machine learning and AI. Um, if, there's, if there's an opportunity there, jump on it. Um, do some learning on your own if it's not part of your curriculum, but I think it's massive. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, I think the, in terms of the, the certificates, there would be a bit of research, that, research you'd have to do to make sure that you are, um, you are finding out which ones are specific to your particular field, um, but it's good to hear some of those ones that you had mentioned, Eric, so thanks for sharing that. Um, so we had another question pre-submitted to us, and it was from an MBA graduate, and they're wondering what are some of the job opportunities available to them um, in your field? So I know you talked about a variety of different opportunities, but maybe you could just touch on a few more that might be specific to an MBA grad. Yeah, sure. Um, I would say generally, on the MBA side, uh, you've got a good foot in the door in terms of moving into uh, a leadership role. Um, great, great foundation. And, um, you know, in terms of areas of, uh, you know, where to focus and what those opportunities might be. So again, depending on background, depending on level of experience, um, could be in a leadership role um, in, in this field or, you know, again, I would say generally uh, most fields on the on the business side. Um, you know, more specifically thinking about transportation logistics um, from an MBA perspective. Again, it, it would uh, it would depend, but primarily it gives you an advantage from moving into uh, moving into a leadership role and really advancing through uh, through your career over time. Um, without that, you're relying very heavily on uh, on demonstrated performance, experience, proficiency. Yeah, I think there's a lot of great opportunities for an MBA grad. Um, certainly the ones that Eric mentioned today, but um, so many in, in the business realm and having that extra education, I think can only set you up for success. So Definitely thank you for that question. Yeah. Um, so we do have a live question here actually, and I think it was pre-submitted as well. So there's a person coming from the IT background with a bachelor's in electronics and telecommunications and they have nine years of experience. They're wondering where they might fit into JDI. Um, 
They're currently pursuing an MBA in project management. So with that experience in mind, would there be any, any opportunities mm -hmm. at JDI you can think of, Eric? Natasha, sorry, was that specific to logistics and transportation or just in general? I think this one was just in general. Um, they're looking to switch the role. So they've been in IT, but now they're looking mm -hmm. to maybe change um, from the technical side to the management side. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, I, I would say, listen, not, definitely opportunities at JDI from, from a project management perspective. Um, you know, we do have a project engineering group and, uh, you know, they very much do take leadership roles in, uh, in working through all of those projects that we would have for, you know, be it a, be it a, a refit, a, you know, a turnaround or, you know, a refurbishment of, uh, of a plant or a facility. Um, good, broad depth on that team and a great, uh, a great group. And I would say, you know, definitely opportunities for engineers, project managers, um, it would be the same on the IT side. I know that uh, it's kind of a switch moving out of IT and uh, moving into, into something different, but we do have project managers on the IT side as well. And, um, you know, very, very interesting world. Uh, we, you know, again, I would say we within transportation logistics rely heavily on the, uh, on the great work that uh, our IT folks do. Um, we would take on, as an organization, a lot of our um, IT work in-house. Um, we have a, a big group. I want to say someone's going to probably get mad for me given the wrong number, but I want to <laughs> say it's, you know, we have three to 400 folks here and, you know, kind of based in, in St. John or working remotely, remotely supporting our St. John operations on the IT side. And, uh, you know, those roles vary. Um, you know, data analytics, it's, it's critical as we go forward. And, you know, that whole, the whole piece around digital transformation, it's, we're in it. It's, uh, it's, it's not a, it's not a fad and it's not, not going away. No different than, um, you know, you think about energy and emissions and our carbon impact. This isn't, this isn't going away. It's, uh, and again, opportunities in there for folks as well. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's awesome that there's a team of over 300 people. I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of great opportunity. And for the person who submitted this question, if IT is still a passion of yours, like Eric said, it looks like there are opportunities to sort of combine that IT skill with the management side of things um, and be involved in that way. So that, that's another great opportunity. Thank you for sharing that. So we had another question pre-submitted to us um, specific to the transportation business. And they're wondering if you could share um, sort of the keys to success in transportation business. Yeah, so, you know, I'm not sure if, if that means keys to an individual's success in the industry <laughs> or if it's uh, the keys to a company's success. But uh, listen, I'll, I'll talk briefly about both. So sure. on the individual side, I think I, I touched on what I, what I think some of those keys are, right? Integrity, you know, and again, it's, it's fast paced. You, you, gotta, you gotta be able to, you gotta work hard and you gotta get the work done when it needs to get done. And especially if you're in operations, it's, it doesn't stop. So you need to have uh, the right team in place and the right, uh, the right measures set up. So it really comes back to what I said before about planning, it's, it's absolutely critical. Um, have options, have alternatives. Um, again, don't rely on, don't rely on one and, you know, execute on your plan. Um, you need to, again, as an individual, learn quickly. Um, you know, and, and again, when it, when the opportunity presents itself, become an expert. It could be becoming an expert in the transportation of dangerous goods. It could be becoming an expert around, you know, machine learning or, or AI or analytics. And you may be in an operations role, but no problem. You'll still have uh, you'll still have the opportunity to add value as you go along through your career, and working with folks uh, day to day in any business that you're involved in. Um, as I said before, you know the other key would be from an indi individual perspective, take responsibility for your career. Um, you know, there's it's you know I would say ultimately it uh, it lands on our individual shoulders, and um, we have to we have to accept that. And um, again make changes when, when they need to be made. So when feedback comes, take it for what it is and uh, it'll move on. Um, again, I would say the last, the last piece on the individual side, exactly what I said before, don't spend a lot of time worrying about those things that you can't control. Be aware of them, track them, know how they're gonna impact your business, 
and communicate that very, very well. But don't spend a lot of time worrying about them. There's nothing you can probably do about it. Um, but uh, certainly do um, focus on those things where you do have control. And uh, if there's a gap there, you, you should you should be worrying about it. You should have a plan and um, you should have options, as many as you can. Um, from a business perspective, keys to success, uh, customer focus, it's absolutely critical. Um, need to have a great customer experience and we need to make that experience better all the time. Um, we need to be evolving, we need to change. And I don't think it really matters what business you're in, you always need to be improving your product. So focusing on that is, uh, is really gonna, gonna help everyone uh, along, along their careers. Um, you know, again, understanding the business, you know, getting out there, seeing it day to day, uh, not trying to manage it from, you know, behind, uh, behind the computer, so to speak. Um, there is, there is value in managing by walking around and, uh, getting out there, seeing it, smelling it, right. Just employ more than one of your senses in, uh, in your day to day business dealings for sure. Whenever you get the opportunity, it's going to, it's going to help a lot and uh, help, you, help you flush out some opportunities or some gaps. For sure, that's some great advice. Thank you very much for that. Um, we had some question, a couple of questions that are sort of on the same, the same realm, I guess, as the last one. So one person has asked how important it is to have a referral. So perhaps if they're entering a, a, a career at JDI or, or another business, what, what would you say about that? How important is it having a referral? Yeah, great question. So I'd say as a student, um, as a student looking for a work term or co-op work term, I would say not critical. Um, I wouldn't say that, you know, you shouldn't have one on there. I, I, would, I would actually say that it's, it's, it's going to help uh, in some cases, um, and it's certainly not going to hurt. You want to make sure that it's a, a good referral, someone that you've connected with, um, made them aware that uh, they, they may receive a call. Um, really make sure that they're aware of what the positions are that you might be applying for in advance of submitting them as a referral. You wanna make sure that you're gonna get the right referral for the right role. And, um, you know, again, generally as a student, not critical. Um, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't expect necessarily a student going out, you know, looking for a work term or even really looking for their, you know, their first role out there to have a, a good broad list of referrals. But if you've done volunteer work, um, look in that area. Is there a leader there that, uh, that you can lean on? Um, from an academic perspective, is there somebody on the UNB side that, can, uh, that you could use? Um, if you've done some, done some part-time work, part work, sorry, um, certainly uh, if there's an opportunity there, that would also be, be helpful. Um, thinking about an international student, um, I, again, I would say not critical, right? I, I wouldn't expect it necessarily from a student. However, for somebody that's out there and has established their career, it, it's important, um, very important. You know, past, past outcomes are generally a reasonable way to uh, let folks know, me or others, how, uh, how performance could be in the future. So, you know, again, um, you wanna make sure you have the right ones and that's, that's probably the best piece of advice I could give there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And actually you mentioned something that sort of plays into the next question here, which is whether you have any tips for advancing your career. So outside for a student, for example, outside of their education, um, outside of co-op and maybe for alumni outside of their, their career experience, what are some other ways that you can help advance your career? So you mentioned volunteering. Um, maybe you have some thoughts on that, some particular volunteer opportunities or other ways they could do so. I certainly do. So a, a few things. I'll, I'll talk, I guess, briefly just uh, from a from a student perspective. Um, volunteer work uh, is is a great way to get leadership experience. Um, probably going to be tough to get uh, a lot of meaningful leadership experience in a paid environment, especially in an industry that uh, where you have some interest, but still possible. I would say, if time permits and your your studies aren't going to be impacted. Um, you know, make the time to, uh, to find some meaningful volunteer work where you can add some value. It's, uh, listen, it's going to help your community, number one. Um, it's going to help, you know, <laughs> you in terms of your personal development. 
And <clears throat> in many cases, it, it certainly will help on the job hunt. Um, it's, it's important and it says a lot. So, you know, see what you can, see what you can find. I, I'm gonna say it's not, it's not going to necessarily hinder folks if they, if they don't. I wanna be crystal clear on that. But uh, certainly uh, more, more, help than, uh, more help than harm if you have it versus if, uh, if you don't. Um, you know, what are some other ways? Again, um, just showing you know, your desire to, to work hard is, uh, is gonna help as you're out there looking, looking for that, uh, that first career role after university. And, um, you know, I would say uh, certainly volunteering is good. And um, any other leadership opportunities you can take on would, would also be helpful. So be it from a part-time work perspective, uh, an internship, um, take your pick. For sure, yeah, we get, we get asked questions quite a bit about how do you stand out against the competition? And I think you raised a really good point that um, if your education level is the same as another competitor um, and maybe your past work experience as well, it, sometimes it comes down to sort of those volunteer opportunities or those other experiences that you've had that you've gained skills that would lend to the job. So I think what you said, Eric, is, is really true. It, it, can, it can help you sort of get your foot a little bit further. It's not necessarily necessary, but um, those opportunities are always really, really um, important, I would say. Yeah. And then, and sorry, I don't. I didn't answer the second part of the question, which, which I think was for those that are already out there engaged in their career. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple of things I would say there. Number one, um, you know, don't be, don't be afraid to take risks. Um, you know, again, uh, consider it. You know, give it, uh, give it some good thought. But if you, again, <clears throat> luck is preparation and opportunity, as they say. So you want to be prepared. Um, spend time learning. Uh, lots of time. And, uh, it, you know, you may have heard this before, but uh, not all uh, readers lead, but all leaders read. And um, spend, spend time learning and uh, develop that expertise in, uh, in those areas, especially where you have responsibility. You know, I guess my, my education hasn't stopped since I graduated from UNB. Um, you know, been involved in uh, many I'll say sessions through UNB, be it a certificate or other other types of programs through UNB. Really, over over the last many many years, um, done had a lot of time in with um, the Ivy School of Business through uh, Western University as well. Um, I would take advantage of uh, any of those internal learning opportunities that pop up from time to time here at JDI or elsewhere, and uh, it it doesn't stop. So, you know, and it shouldn't stop. Mm -hmm. For sure. Thank you, Eric. That's great advice. So we do have a question here that came in live. It's a little bit more specific. Um, we have a recent grad from UNB who would like to work with a data science team. They're wondering, there's no positions right now um, on the website, but they're wondering <coughs> if you know whether there's some opportunities there, perhaps with JDI. Yeah. So uh, specifically, I would say reach out to Tasha. She can share my email. For sure. Connect with my wife who works uh, in data and analytics here at JDI. But, uh, you know, more specifically, I would say huge opportunity in this field. It's, uh, it, it, it's massive. So um, you think about, uh, you know, things, <clears throat> things like uh, carbon, you think about things like emissions, um, data is just critical. And there's a ton of it out there. Um, you think about machine learning, as I mentioned, AI, uh, the, these pieces are, you know, I think immense opportunities in terms of this industry and many, many others. Um, some of these things are very much in their infancy, but we use them today and uh, they, work, they work very, very well. Um, we would lean heavily on uh, data and analytics, dashboards, KPIs, in terms of how we manage our businesses at JDI. Um, you know, the, the progression in this field over the last you know, I'll say 15 years is, is just mind blowing to me. Um, you know, when I, I'd say when I first started uh, working to where, where I am today, I've, I've had the opportunity to see the transition and it's, it's still ongoing. It's, it's incredible. So the, the field that you're talking about has, uh, has a ton of opportunity. And 
I would say a ton of opportunity for specializing in, in many areas. So, but uh, I certainly would be, would be happy to make a connection for you and uh, get you pointed in the right direction. That's Always wonderful. looking for great people. Yeah, thank you so much for offering that, Eric. And I love that you that you mentioned your wife because one of the things we always say in the alumni office is that we can help connect you to alumni working in various fields. Um, and though they might not be working in the field you're interested in, they probably know a few people who are. So it just kind of speaks to the power of networking and you know making those connections. So thanks very much for offering um, to connect with this this person. So feel free to reach out to me if you would like to get connected to Eric, um, and we'll make that happen for sure. So we do have a question that came in um, specifically about JDI and recruitment. They're wondering how far does JDI reach in, in terms of searching for talent? So do they go outside of Atlanta, Canada for hiring at all? Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> you think about the various platforms that, uh, that we would advertise on. So again, it could be you know, something as simple as, depending on the role, we could be using Kijiji, right? It could be on Career Beacon, which I think is generally Canadian. Um, <clears throat> but depending on the role, certainly we'd be looking internationally. Um, you know, we use, uh, we use Facebook, uh, things like that, LinkedIn as well. So those would be, I'd say, key areas. And somebody on the HR side is probably going to be uh, sending me an email here about all the other things that they do. But <laughs> I would say in general terms, yes. And uh, in terms of uh, hiring international, uh, international students or, or folks, I'd say outside of Canada, we do it all the time. And uh, with, with great, great success. The process is, uh, is very much the same. And, um, and again, we would see that generally, I think probably through our, through our LinkedIn and uh, in Facebook connections. We do have, um... We do have a job bank at UNB as well, where various positions are posted. I believe JDI positions would be posted there as well as they arise. So that's exclusive to students and alumni. So be sure to check out the UNB job bank um, if you are looking for different opportunities. And I know with now, because of COVID and a lot of things moving um, virtual, there's probably a lot of opportunities too, I would, I would guess, and maybe you can correct me, Eric, to work for JDI, perhaps not in the standard locations? Yeah, listen, I would say globally, we've probably seen a significant shift in any company's appetite to have uh, some of their staff or all of their staff working remotely. Um, you know, I'd say we've seen that, we have seen that on the JDI side as well. So sure. certainly there are opportunities for, for remote work and, um, you know, still a lot of value in, uh, and having that face-to-face -face time as well though. Absolutely, for sure. So we have about five minutes left and there is one more live question here that I would like to get to. Um, and this is sort of a fun one. So uh, a good one to end on as well, I think. Looking back at your time and your career, is there anything that you would have done differently or something you wish you had known a little bit earlier on that you might share as a piece of advice for our participants today? Yeah. I <laughs> Looking back, uh, and, and even today, so I'm, I'm just way too serious. I have to, <laughs> I have to, I have to chill out. You know, again, um, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. I would say there were situations looking back now that I wish I would have learned more quickly. Um, that's, that's really it. And I wouldn't even say it's a regret. It's, it's just that, you know what, I, I would have done that a little bit differently by uh, becoming an expert. Um, very quickly. So I would just pass this along as a, just a piece of advice in general. Again, if you're, if you're in operations and uh, something pops up, you know, be it an opportunity or a gap, and it's kind of related to that area where you have some responsibility, if you don't know anything about it, get on it quick, uh, learn quickly, right? Be honest, but, uh, but get, get some expertise. Perfect. Thank you so much. So we are just about five minutes to one o'clock. That was our last live question. So I think we will end it there. Um, thank you so much everyone for submitting so many great questions, whether it was in advance or, or here live today. We really hope that you gain some more knowledge about these various career opportunities and working with JDI. Um, so a huge, huge thank you to you, Eric. We are so appreciative for your time and your support as a volunteer here today. We really couldn't do these webinar sessions without our alumni like you. So thank you to you and to JDI for supporting this session. 
thanks everybody and uh, good luck to you in whatever you might do. And, and lastly, I would say stay safe out there. Thank you, Eric, that's great. Um, so, so today's session has been recorded. So keep an eye on your emails for a recording of the session. If you would like to look back and, and hear a little bit more about JDI to watch his presentation again. Um, and if we didn't get to your question today, like Eric said, he's more than happy to connect with, with some of you. So please feel free to send me an email. You should all have it in your inbox from this event and we're happy to try and, and make those connections for you. A reminder as well, if you're not already a 10,000 Coffees member, um, the address should be up here on the screen. You can visit ump.ca slash 10,000 Coffees to learn a little bit more about this virtual networking platform. It's a really great, great way to make some connections, like Eric said, um, whether it's his wife or some other alumni in various fields, uh, really great opportunities to meet some new people. So please check it out. And again, just a huge thank you to all of you for joining us here today. We really hope you took home some new knowledge about JDI and these various fields. And a big, big thank you to Eric Burley and to JDI for supporting this session. We're so appreciative for your time. So thanks, everyone, and hope you all have a wonderful day.